Okay, six weeks to a big park run or a big 5K PB. I'm gonna talk you through week by week and give you the exact sessions that I would do. And then on the seventh weekend, so after a seven day mini taper, you're gonna run a park run or a 5K PB. What we're doing and the theory of this training session is we're going to tap into an area that typically runners neglect, which is your top end speed. So we're gonna work on our top end speed and we're gonna work on our power. The structure of the week remains the same. And I will always advocate that running is often overcomplicated. But if you do the right things well, which we're gonna talk through the right things, you're going to do well if you've got the consistency over time. That schedule is gonna be your Wednesday interval session where we're working on our raw speed. It's gonna be our Sunday long run, which we wanna keep in there because we still want to tap into that endurance and stamina. What we're going to insert into the week is a Monday strength session. Why on Monday? Because we've done the long run on the Sunday. You then do simple weight exercises to improve your glute strength, your hamstring strength, your quad strength, and your push off power. That's exactly what we're gonna tap into. That's gonna feed into your faster running, which we're going to do on the Wednesday. So it nicely breaks up the week. So if you're thinking, Wednesday, I'm gonna go fast, Sunday, I'm gonna go long, and Monday, I've got the weight session, which is going to help me with my power in order to make my intervals fast. It's gonna also make me a more efficient, robust runner that's able to move over the ground more effectively. So how does it look? Here's how we're gonna attack it. We're gonna become the very best, fastest mile runner that we possibly can. Mile 1600 meters, 1.6K. We're gonna work on becoming the fastest mile runner that we possibly can. So we're training as if we are just trying to run a mile. That is gonna enable us to tap into an area of our game that is overlooked by 99% of athletes or 99% of recreational runners. And what we're gonna do is just split up that mile so that we can become the very, very fastest mile runner that we possibly can. And we're gonna work with somebody who can currently run a mile in eight minutes. We're going to use the target of six minutes per mile or three minutes 45. So very round numbers, eight minutes at the moment that they can run for a mile. And we're gonna try and get 25% faster and run six minutes per mile. What's that gonna to do to our overall game? And this is really interesting to sort of think about. If we're able to go from, a lot of people will come to me and say, I wanna get faster in a marathon. I can currently run 307, or I can currently run 337, I wanna dip under 330, or I wanna dip under three hours. How do I do it? And we're looking at a big goal that takes sort of three months, six months, or a year to work towards. We gradually bite it off in stages. When you're working with something like a mile, or you're working with five kilometers, first of all, you've got plenty of bites at the cherry, because you can go really hard, on a park run or a 5K, and three weeks later, we can come and do exactly the same again and see how the training is having an effect. So we get to become a better trainer. With the mile, we get even more bites at the cherry of that. So every single week, we're gonna be able to see how we're moving forward. I'm not saying that you're gonna be able to see the speed difference seven days later from Wednesday to Wednesday. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you have never run a 30 second rep as fast as you possibly can, but knowing that you've got 10 of them to do, you're going to unleash a different athlete. You're going to move over the ground in a more efficient way. You may switch on your glutes and make them fire for the first time efficiently. And remember, this is somebody based on somebody who's going from eight minutes for the mile to running six minutes for the mile, which is a huge difference. And it opens so many doors. If you're currently running eight minutes for a mile all out, let's say your, your 5K time is 30 minutes and we're trying to get you under 20 minutes and, and be comfortable at running 345 per kilometer. And I'm jumping around here a little bit in kilometers and miles, but you get the picture. These are the sorts of gains, 25%, 33% gains. These are the sorts of gains that get us out of bed and they keep us honest and they get us excited. This is what we're aiming at. Okay, warm up, incredibly important. Warm up for the interval session is more important than warm up for a 5K race. Think about it like this. I wanna put my body in a, the best possible position to get the most super compensation out of the interval session. Especially if it's an untapped area, like short intervals, which is what we're gonna focus on. You want your body to be ready to tackle those initial intervals, those initial reps. And so you'll be sweating by the end of the, the warm up. It'll be 10 to 15 minutes. I want you to be running 50 to 75%. Even with short reps, you might want to do 
times two during the warm up so that you are ready to go on those first couple of intervals during the session. Week one, 10 times 30 seconds, five times a minute, 10 times 30 seconds. And I want you to take 60 seconds rest in between and keep that as a constant. Keep it consistent throughout the weeks. And you might be thinking, I've only got to run 30 seconds for a rep, but I'm going to rest for one minute. Yeah, that's what you're going to do because we're going to focus on quality and keeping that rest 60 seconds, preparing the heart rate and the breathing to come under control, but the heart rate to come down, super important and gets you ready and primes you in order to manage the session. It should be a bit of a shock to you, especially if you've not done really short reps before like 30 seconds. You'll feel like it's all over before you're finished. You're accelerating and all of a sudden you're decelerating. Try not to decelerate, try to run through the line and then into the one minute rest, but try to recover as full as you possibly can during those 60 seconds. And as I said, it's gonna be a bit of a shock to you. If you're new to this, don't go out too quick. Let the run come to you. And it's gonna give you a lesson on pacing. 10 times 30 seconds alone is difficult to pace that. And it's gonna come out all over the show, especially if you're new to interval running, especially if you're new to the speed, and especially if you're new to shorter reps like that. After those 30 seconds rep, those five times one minute, it's gonna feel like you've got more time to get into the run. You may need to slow down. If you can hold pace, fantastic. Once you're onto that final part, the third segment in the interval session and you're doing 10 times 30 seconds, if you can speed up again from those minute reps, think, right, just 10 times 30 seconds, five minutes of hard work to, to go, and you've got 60 seconds rest in between. What the session's gonna give us is 15 minutes of hard work. You can do that, 15 minutes of hard work. And if we're running at, at that six minute pace or faster, that's 2.5 times the mile that we're trying to do. Week two, very similar. 10 times 30 seconds, 10 times a minute, 10 times 30 seconds. So the difficult part here is gonna be, okay, we know what week one felt like, so we're probably used to it. And although we're not gonna improve Wednesday to Wednesday, just in seven days, we're gonna know, psychologically, we're gonna be able to enter that session knowing what it feels like. Actually, those 30 seconds are harder than what I thought they were gonna be, and those minute reps, they seem really long compared to the 30 seconds. That's brilliant, you're gonna do more of those minute reps and just increase that from five minutes of hard work to 10 minutes of hard work in that middle section. What I want you to focus on there is holding pace throughout. So week three, five times a minute, 10 times 90 seconds. So again, 20 minutes of hard work, but we're chopping it up in a slightly different way. And what I want you to do is focus on holding pace for those minute and a half intervals. You should be starting to see, okay, I felt what it was like on week one, felt what it was like on week two. Psychologically, you're in a better place to approach this session, but you're also getting some physiological and some physical benefits already within two weeks. Start to tap in, into those. Remember the warm up, remember the cool down afterwards. Super important. Week four, six times one minute, six times two minutes. 12 reps, 18 minutes of hard work. It's less volume by 10% than what you're used to for the previous two weeks, but we're focusing more on being able to hold what we're trying to do, that six minute per mile pace, for longer, for two minute reps. So it should feel pretty comfortable those six times one minute because we're used to it now. You might be, by this point, if you're moving forward and you're improving slightly, you might be able to pinch a bit of extra pace, but be ready to tackle a longer interval. Those two minute intervals, although there's only six of them, should feel a little bit longer. And again, especially if you're new to shorter distances, if you're new to speed running, if you're new to intervals. Week five, even less volume. So we're working even more on on quality, and this is just 15 minutes of hard work. You're gonna do three times one minute, three times two minutes, and then two times three minutes. Again, 60 seconds rest in between each rep, proper warm up, prime yourself to get the best out of this session. The difficulty here, and what I really want you to focus on, is getting ready for those two times three minutes. You should be running if you're working off these paces, you should be running almost half a mile for those three minute intervals. It's difficult, especially after the faster running. But for the one minute intervals to the two minute intervals to the three minute intervals, you should have to slow down slightly. But what I would focus on is getting to those three minute intervals and being able to hold six minute pace. It's going to be difficult. It's only week five and we're already doing 15 minutes of volume and that kind of pace. So you're already doing 2.5 times the mile pace if you're able to hold this pace. Difficult session, but again, we're working with slightly hypotheticals where you're, you're currently at eight minutes and you're trying to get that down to six minutes. Okay, week six, three times one minute, 
three times three minutes. So warm up again properly, prime the body, but then put yourself in a really good position to make those minute reps feel comfortable and make yourself be able to hold, know that the big portion of the session is three times three minutes. Nine minutes of hard work should almost be a mile and a half if you're working at that six minute pace. And if you can do this, box it off, you're putting yourself in a really good position to run a 5K PB. The hard part here is gonna be bouncing from one minute intervals to three minute intervals. I want you to tackle it with confidence because you can already run three minute intervals. You know that from the previous week. You can already run two minute intervals. You can already run a much bigger, bigger volume of 20 minutes. This session is just 12 minutes of hard work. So we're focused on quality and we're focused on within a week, within seven days, we're going to be run, able to run our fastest park run or our fastest 5K. Okay, so on the seventh week, I would miss out the Monday weight session. On the Wednesday, I would do eight to 10 minutes of hard volume, probably minute reps. And then on the Saturday or the Sunday, whenever your park run or your 5K races, go all out. But the question now is for you. Have you done weight training every Monday? Has it happened consistently, week after week after week? Do you currently do weight training every week or is it when you remember it? Be brutally honest with yourself because it's so much easier to analyze your game and know where to proceed. Have you done intervals before? Are you new to intervals? Are these incredibly short reps for you? Have you run this fast before? How did it feel? For some people, it's like, I completely didn't know how to use my body because it's so alien for them. It's really important to be brutally honest with yourself and say what is working, what is not working. And did this, this short blast of short reps, did it have a big impact on my 5K time? I think yes. I think for most people, if you're doing the long run, and you're doing the rest of the easy running, the recovery running in between, you're not skimping on that. You've got the weight session working for you, whether you've done it before or whether you've not done it consistently and now it's a regular fixture, together with those interval sessions where you're working on literally 30 seconds, one minute reps, two minute reps, three minute reps will seem like a far distance. What can you then do for 5K? What time can you run for 5K or your park run? Let me know in the comments below. I think that most people are scratching the surface when it comes to pace, when it comes to speed sessions, when it comes to your overall training. We often aim safe because it frightens us to fail. When for me, the only way you can fail is by not really going for it.